Today's project is very special. I get to be a mystery shopper. Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to buy a workstation though. We're not ordering a computer off of walmart.com. What do you get when you order um, a specialty system? You know, this is not something that you can even buy from one of the major integrators. Okay, well, yeah, you, you could, but there's something to be said from smaller integrators. And so with a little help from Intel, I've put together a workstation order from Box, boxx.com. Let me get it, because it's big. What do you get in the box? See what I did there? Thank you for choosing Box. For more Box solutions, visit box.com. In the box, there's a t-shirt. They knew. I know I'm a mystery shopper, oh no. So this is pretty cool. Comes with the extra cables. Extra power supply cables, the Molex cables, the power cord, which is an enormous power cord. Extra spaghetti strap, SATA cables. Yeah, forget braiding. These are just tiny manageable cables. We've got a DVI to HDMI adapter. And then we've got the installation manual. Oh, it's got a default password. But in California, you're supposed to have a unique randomly generated password per system. Oh, that's fine. Yes, yes, I might have unpacked and then repacked this system like twice already. YouTubering is hard. So this case, steel. <laughs> no weak sauce aluminum here. No, just, just steel. It's a not super modified rack mount case, in fact. In a world where you absolutely positively need the most ridiculous computing processor ever, there is Box.com. The first thing I see about this case that I'm really liking is airflow. I mean, it feels like a not super modified rack mount case with, uh, you know, sort of different panels on the sides, not really a panel on the bottom. Phillips screws, I'm sure that they sell a rack mount kit for this. I, I'd be surprised if they don't. Got plenty of exhaust on the side or the top, depending on how you look at it. Plenty of air intake on the front. Dual USB 3 and audio on the front. Pretty standard fare, really. Power and reset buttons, LEDs, the whole works. So internally in this case, we've got a lot going on. This is a dual socket 3647. Those puppies are gonna pull north of 200 watts each from this system. So of course we've got the Seasonic 1300 watt power supply. It's always nice to see Seasonic. This is the industrial version. So you get the ketchup and mustard cables, but you know, this is not RGB. It doesn't have a clear side panel. Who cares? It's a workstation. It just goes to show you the workstation market does not care about those things. We've got closed loop all-in-one coolers for both CPUs. They're located at the front of the case here. Two little mini radiators, one for each CPU. But that's gonna be pretty effective because those are high static pressure fans. It's gonna be a fair bit of airflow that goes through them. We're gonna power it up in a minute because, uh, ooh, microphone noise. We've got four three and a half inch bays at the top here. They're, uh, you know, they've got this quasi toolless mounting mechanism. You can pop the drive in, it stays on these little pegs. This is a nice solution so you can pop mechanical hard drives in and out. There are no mounting holes for two and a half inch SSDs, however. Fortunately, there are two and a half inch bays at the side here, so you've got plenty of room for two and a half inch bays. We've also got one five and a quarter inch bay right at the front of the machine. It's just right here behind this door, and you've got plenty of room for that as well. The motherboard is a super micro motherboard, so it has an integrated disk controller, tons of SATA ports, tons of SATA connectivity. And then of course, because it's a dual socket machine, we've got tons of PCI Express connectivity on the super micro motherboard. A mix of PCI Express by eight and PCI Express by 16 slots. Equipped in this model is the Quadro P2200. We took a look at that when we were doing the Intel NUC review, but it is a more than capable workstation card. Uh, we're gonna be putting a couple of Tesla V100s in here for some of our testing, but you know, all in all, not too bad. And that's another thing that I'll point out about this chassis configuration. This configuration, because it is a quasi rack configuration, you can put Tesla V100s in here and they have sufficient airflow. Although I would recommend a baffle. Uh, if you're gonna do a build like that, consult with Box and they'll make sure that you get the appropriate accessories. But the internal case design and internal case layout for some of those server class cards that don't have their, their own built-in cooling, they will be able to service that or support that type of requirement if you're looking to do this kind of a build. 
In case you're wondering about memory capacity, we've got eight DIMMs of 16 gigabytes of memory. So 16 times 16 gigabytes of memory for this system. That's the same as eight times 32 or four times 64. So 256 gigs of memory in this system is kind of bananas. Our system as factory equipped is got a Samsung 970 Pro. It's the Pro version of the SSD, it's a one terabyte. So it's pretty zippy. I love how the entire front of this case is covered with 120 millimeter fans. It's just, those are San Ace 120s. Now I'll point out something unusual about the rear IO on this machine. Usually with these server class motherboards, they have IPMI, remote management. They don't have a lot of USB connectivity. Well, this motherboard does. It's got onboard audio, it has extra USB ports, it even has USB Type-C. A server motherboard with USB Type-C, Supermicro's got you covered. It really is the little things that they've done inside the case here because they've got, you know, it's a modular power supply. You don't have to plug everything in, but they went ahead and plugged in some SATA power cables and routed them appropriately. So like you could put a CD-ROM or a DVD burner or something like that in the top. So they've got a SATA cable ready to go along with power for that. Same with the two and a half inch bays. You could easily plug in a SATA SSD. Well, they've, they've pre-installed one cable for you and bundled the cables up real nice so that if you do have a SATA SSD, you can just slide it in. They didn't go too crazy though. I mean, if you're gonna add four mechanical hard drives, a CD-ROM and some other stuff, you're gonna need some cables from the box. But this is a nice solution so that if you lose the box or accidentally throw it out, you're not completely SOL. All right, we're in Windows. Let's shut down and go to Linux. Shut down. Come on. Shut down. What is Windows? It's like, oh, let me just go ahead and install a Windows update while I'm at it. Oops, it's booting, possibly, it's booting. It might have booted, I hear the snow. The Xeon Gold 6258R processors clock in at 2.7 gigahertz based, but they can boost pretty high. I'm seeing 3.5, 3.8 gigahertz regularly. Might have even seen some higher than that for just a few fleeting moments. We're running Indigo. Indigo is notoriously stressful. And I can definitely feel a lot of heat coming off those little AIOs that are cooling the processors. Even still, we're clocking in at 3.3 gigahertz and our Indigo score is right up around 5.7, 5.8, something like that for the bedroom scene, which is really pretty insane. We've got 112 threads online with this system. So it's a lot of horsepower. I'm just gonna let it run through all of its benchmarks. It's gonna take about 24 hours to run through the full suite of tests. We've got the full benchmark results on openbenchmarking.org. So if you wanna check out the specific results for this system against some other systems, I even have some exotic systems, some Xeon Platinum 8124Ms. Yeah, those are off roadmap. <gasps> Where did he get those? I don't know. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Now, I've only been using this system for a few days and I've got to say that I had no idea that a dual Xeon system could be this quiet. I mean, to be sure, this is a workstation. This is sold as a workstation system, but you know, usually they're kind of loud. This is shockingly quiet, especially given the horsepower, especially given that it's a dual processor system with 256 gigabytes of memory. This is one of the quietest systems that I've ever used that has that level of horsepower. So they've done an exceptional job on the internal layout and the uh, component selection. It's even better with the side on. It sort of forces the air all out the back. They've also done something really interesting with the expansion slots, which is uh, if you're running an all-in-one cooler, like we've got the Asetek cooler, that's you know two slot GPU plus two slots of an extra cooler, there are actually physically more expansion slots at the back of this case than there is room for. So if you don't have the three and a half inch bay, for example, you could put that Asetek, you know, cooler that looks like an expansion card at the back and have a bigger, you know, closed loop cooling system for a higher end GPU setup and not actually interfere with any of your PCI Express expansion slots. You'd be surprised how many systems like this depend on, uh, you know, one or two GPUs for compute or research purposes. And a lot of the time they won't use a Tesla, like a Tesla V100, they'll get a 2080 Ti or an RTX 2080 because those are a little bit less expensive. Yeah, they don't have the VRAM, but if you're just a researcher and your data set isn't that large, that can be a really compelling value. Of course, the license agreement on the software prohibits use of you know, those GeForce cards in the data center. So if you're gonna run it in the data center, 
you know, at the university data center or a commercial data center, you have to buy the more expensive cards, even though you could get it done with the, uh, you know, like the RTX 2080 Ti. But in a workstation like this, if you can get away with running an RTX 2080 Ti for your machine learning or research purposes and, you know, 11 gigs of VRAM or 24 gigs of VRAM in the case of a uh, Titan RTX is uh, sufficient, then you can save some money on the physical hardware. I just came to check on the benchmarking to see how it's doing it. Woo, it's a bit louder. The exhaust temperature out of our uh, Seasonic Gold power supply is uh, quite a bit higher. But hey, at least we know the fans ramp, right? Now after some tweaking and tuning, what I'm seeing is shocking. The Xeon Gold 6258 is actually a Platinum 8180. It's like Scooby-Doo when they unmask the... It's like, oh, 6258R. Oh, no, it's actually the Platinum 8180. Now the 6258 is a newer CPU, it's got some tweaks in silicon, but this CPU is at the same performance level as the Xeon Platinum 8180. It's a $10,000 CPU, but these CPUs only, you know, suggested retail price on Intel Arc is about $4,000. This is a dual Platinum 8180 level performance system in a desktop form factor, and it mostly doesn't sound like a jet engine. Now even though these CPUs are geared for triple channel memory, you can actually run four sticks of memory per CPU, so 256 gigabytes. One of the nicest things about the 6258R is that it does turbo up to 4.0 gigahertz. Now it's gonna be lightly loaded, obviously, you're not gonna be running all 28 cores at four gigahertz, but if you've got something running in the background, just a couple of threads, four gigahertz, sustained. All right, so we've got our box.com system. This is the Apex D, you know, 56 cores. This is a, a workstation that starts at $10,000. So what's the mystery shopper component here? Well, it's performance. So immediately out of the box, if you look at our Pharonix test suite benchmarks, we can see the stream benchmark. And the stream benchmark is basically just a memory benchmark. But this memory score is shockingly low. It's really only a little better than as if you were running two dims per socket on an Intel Xeon. Now I don't want to dramatize it or make it into anything more complicated than it is, but the configuration problem that led to this is just simply the fact that there's an unbalanced number of memory sticks compared to the memory channels that are available. Really the Xeon CPUs work best when there are six memory sticks per socket. Going to eight memory sticks per socket is a little bit of a performance regression. I think Intel's original design for these, when you're talking about two DIMMs per channel, um, you know, the blue sockets versus the black sockets, you could mix regular DRAM and Optane, and that use case would probably make sense. But what was happening in reality with the performance of the system is that when you configure it with, say, 256 gigabytes of memory, that unbalanced configuration means that depending on what your memory benchmark is doing, you're not necessarily going to get great performance, and that's exactly what we were seeing in the performance benchmark. Well, the fix? Yeah, just pop some memory out. So we can go from 256 gigabytes to 192 gigabytes. And then we basically have identical performance with our Platinum 8180M Xeon Cousins. And that's a much better benchmark result in the Pharonix test suite. That's the 6258R4 benchmark as we run through this, this benchmark. It took us about four tries on support uh, to uh, sort of get to where we needed to be, but box.com support was pretty awesome. Now one mystery that was left behind, left for another day, left for another day with more time, is is there a BIOS setting that would actually fix this up? Is there a BIOS setting that would actually change this? Because you do have BIOS options for things like subnuma clustering, where you could take, you know, even though it's one physical piece of silicon, you can split it apart into two halves, and one half has access to the memory controller on one side of the CPU, which would you know be three sticks of memory in this configuration, and the other half of the same physical CPU has closer physical access to the other three sticks of memory. That actually reduces latency. Yeah, the time it takes electrons to travel from one side of the silicon to the other, that's measurable. That's, that's kind of a large number when we're talking about things that turbo up to four gigahertz. I mean, in one four billionth of a second, light can travel about that far. And light is the fastest thing that there is. So, yeah. Yeah, I know, one, one billionth of a second is this, and then you divide that by four, and it's like even smaller. Yeah, think about that for a second. Light, the fastest thing that there is, can only go about this far in one four billionth of a second. So you can imagine that, you know, a million miles of little tiny wires in silicon, it's a slightly different situation, 
but yeah, it's pretty darn fast. And there you have it. The out of the box, B-O-X-X, -X, configuration needed a little bit of tweaking, but there you go. That's, that's level one. That's why, you know, even when you get a, a workstation, you gotta play with it. You gotta do a little bit of stuff with it just to make sure that it's gonna run okay. Just to make sure that the benchmarks are sort of where you expect them to be. Be sure to check out Box Computers, and again, big thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video and uh, letting me order this system and letting me do a little bit of mystery shopper troubleshooting. It's like, why is the memory speed only half? Oh, it's a bias setting. Yeah, uh, they knew, they knew immediately. So, you know, you kind of expect that. They sell workstation computers. They've seen workstation type tasks. If you tell them you're only getting half memory bandwidth, they're probably gonna know immediately what that is and say, oh yeah, we can, we can change that. You're doing memory interleaving across sockets, which is useful for some workloads, I guess, but not useful in our case. So, good job, Box. If you wanna buy this system, there's a link for that. You can check that out, but it's from Box Computers. Uh, that's it for this one. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Uh, Linux ran great on this, by the way. I did all, almost all of my testing in Linux. It ships with Windows. You can get it with Windows or Linux. And Windows is fully qualified. Windows software is fully qualified. Windows software is fully tested for two processors on Xeon. When you're buying a really expensive workstation, you don't want to call up, you know, Autodesk support. And it's like, you're running a what now? Yeah, we don't support that. But with a solution like this, you can count on that support. If you call them up and you say, hey, I'm going to be running all this Autodesk software, they're like, great. We've got the perfect workstation configuration for you. I'm gonna run the Adobe suite, I'm gonna run Linux. I'm gonna be doing machine learning and research. If you talk to them, they help you out. That's how it's supposed to work. I'm Wendell, this is a dual Xeon Gold 6258R processor with 256 gigabytes of memory. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.